Welcome to CS210, Discrete Structures. This is a math course that is standard in the computer science curriculum. If you have no idea what discrete math is about, this lecture is meant to introduce you to what we will be doing this semester. So what is discrete math? Well, Wikipedia defines it as the study of mathematical structures that are fundamentally discrete rather than continuous. You might be more familiar with the non-mathematical term for discrete, but it's actually spelled differently from here in discrete math. In discrete math, it means that the items are distinct from each other. For example, we will be working with integers a lot in this class. That means whole numbers that don't have an infinite amount of fractional components in between them, so 0 to 1, and nothing in between like 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and so on. They are discrete, and so they are individually separate and distinct. We will be working with integers, as well as other topics such as Boolean logic, or something that results in either true or false, sets, or sets of discrete elements, like a set of integers, and functions and relations. So as a brief overview, Chapter 1 is about figuring out formulas to describe a given sequence of numbers, evaluating summations, using AND, OR, and NOT operators to write Boolean expressions, which will result in true or false, writing predicates, which will evaluate to either true or false based on the input variables, and writing implications, which are essentially if-then statements. So one of the things we will be doing in Chapter 1 is to use propositional variables to signify different statements. So for example, we can have S represents save has finished, and Q represents user wishes to quit, and if we want to write a statement that says the user wishes to quit, but the save has not finished, we can write this out symbolically with Q, and then the AND sign, and the negation sign, and S. And this is similar to what you would be doing in programming, except the symbols are different. Chapter 2 is about describing numbers, such as whether they're even or odd, or even divisible by some other number, and we're describing them in mathematical terms. We also do a lot of proofs in this chapter, and we use induction to also prove things, or just derive other types of things. We also work with representing numbers with different number systems, such as binary and hexadecimal. So for an example of a simple proof we will be doing later on, let's say we want to prove that the sum of an even number and an odd number is going to be odd. So then we'll define an even number as 2k, or 2 times some integer. We'll define some odd number as 2 times j plus 1, or another definition for odd integer. Then we will do the math and add them, and simplify, and it should come out to the definition of another odd integer. Chapter 3 is about using sets. We'll be using union, intersection, and subtraction as set operations in order to derive new sets from old sets. We'll also be drawing Venn diagrams and working with Boolean algebra notation. After we cover Boolean algebra notation, we'll be working with logic circuits as well. So for example, let's say we have set A contains 1, 2, and 3 as its elements, and set B contains 4 and 5 as its elements. So what is A union B? Well, union means we're going to put all of the elements from both sets into one set. So we end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in a single set. That is A union B. And finally, Chapter 4 is about the definitions and properties of functions. We will be doing composition operations like f of g of x. You might have done this in a previous math class. And we'll also be looking at the definitions and properties of relations as well. This chapter will also contain a lot of diagramming. So for example, we might have a diagram of a function, and we have a discrete amount of elements in the domain and codomain, and then we have to identify whether the inverse is also going to be a function. So we can find that by diagramming it, or by knowing the function properties. Each of these chapters are somewhat independent of the rest, with a few pieces carried over. So if you're feeling shaky in one area, you might do much better in another area down the road. Beyond the textbook itself, there are also additional resources out there. You just have to search. You might check on YouTube for additional videos about discrete math. I will provide links to some of the free online wiki books. And there are also outline books or review books from other publishers. Some of the topics in this course directly relate to computer science basics, such as propositional logic being used for control flow. 
or more advanced CS topics, such as set theory being used for machine learning. But overall, this class will teach you problem-solving skills that will help in all areas of CS. I hope that you enjoy this course. Ask the instructor questions at any time if you need help with a topic, or keep in touch with some classmates so you can study together.